As the fall academic year approaches and concerns with COVID-19 continue, many school districts are preparing to offer remote learning in some capacity for their students. Karen Hoban, Vice President of Strategic Alliances at Bay Path University, spoke with Zydalise Bauer about the new remote learning certification course they're offering to help support educators with online teaching techniques. Hoban also shares a new gap year course they have created that will help educate students about social justice history and ways they can address current events and continue to be active in their communities. As we started to hear more and more about elementary school teachers, secondary school, higher ed teachers having some challenge in moving all of their curriculum online, uh, we partnered with the National Online Learning Institute to develop uh, this uh, 22 hour uh, asynchronous, which means that you go at your own pace, um, and then three hours of synchronous learning. Um, and so this is just the, the latest iteration that we have at Bay Path. Now being a parent myself of a young child who is entering elementary school and having spoken to many other parents, I've heard a lot of different experiences that classrooms and teachers have had to face being forced into this virtual learning environment due to the pandemic. What are some of the challenges that you've heard from educators and how will this course address them? Uh, actually, the RAND Corporation did a survey, and what they found was that elementary school teachers were less likely to have seen tra received training on various distance learning topics than even their secondary school counterparts. Um, how to provide distance learning that promotes topics, um, you know, that will really engage um, students. Um, how to use virtual learning platforms, new technology, how to provide distance learning opportunities that are really gonna motivate students to wanna to keep learning. Here are the major concerns that teachers had to offer. Strategies to keep students engaged and motivated. Strategies to address the loss of hands-on learning activities. And guidance for tools for assessing students' emotional and social well-being. Really, really key during this time. So adults are not the only ones that are feeling uh, the chaos of the moment um, the kids are too and parents are really being thrown in to the deep end i would say to try to help their children figure out so once the computer gets turned off and they then have to continue on with their learning what role are the are the parents going to have they play a major role and so this this certificate really can be for individual parents as well as teachers so I really want to stress that component, that if you're really looking to really feel like you're understanding the technology and the platform that your child has to learn on, put some time into learning your, yourself. We were already living in a very virtual world before COVID-19, and now it seems like that remote learning might be something that could be here to stay. Does BayPath offer anything that goes more in depth beyond the certification course? Yes, absolutely. So if someone came through this certificate and their, their appetite was really whetted, and they said, you know what, I, one, I either might actually go into teaching myself um, at various levels, um, but if they wanted to go into higher ed teaching, we have a master's in learning design and technology that is a fairly new offering. And it is intended to be for someone who wants to teach at the higher ed level. So it goes over a whole host of adaptive learning techniques, which means that it's personalized to each individual learner, educational gamification um, to make sure that even at college age, you're keeping the students that are gonna be really uh, active and involved. And then uh, diagnosis um, uh, and digital uh, e-portfolios. So it goes over an introduction to higher ed administration, curriculum design, but then it adds on those specific courses about online learning. So it is it does lead to a master's degree. You could actually even dovetail some of those courses into an EDD. Um, so if at the doctorate level, even at Bay Path now. So a lot has changed at the university over the last 25 years. Throughout this um, pandemic that we've been going through and these months that we've been in self-quarantine and isolation, we have also seen concerns and issues with social justice arise. What is Bay Path doing to help educate on this topic? Well, good question. And I'm very excited to talk to you about this gap semester class side of list because I am announcing it for the first time to you. 
we're unveiling it. And we actually started to think about this back in early May when I started to hear from students um, who are recent high school grads and their parents about questioning what were they gonna do come fall um, in college? What, what was the environment even going to be like? And so we started to put together, and I went back to the director of our legal studies program, Gwen Jordan, who had said to me that she was really passionate about an innocence project. And so I knew she wanted to start that at Bay Path. I asked her whether or not that could be a topic. So we started to plan. And then of course, over the summer, all of the protests began and, and truly just, you know, a really horrific time. And so we really expanded the course. And so it is an interdisciplinary course. It's called Exploring Pathways to Social Justice. And we're going to be taking the students through historical context, slavery on through to the 60s and the civil rights movement to today. Uh, our communications faculty member, Janine Fondon, is going to be talking about the role of media um, in all of this. You know, how in the 60s, television uh, really led to a national awareness of exactly what was happening uh, down south. And of course, now we have a camera and a video in, in everyone's pocket and we now have, we now see the national outpouring of um, emotion um, surrounding this topic. And a lot of young people who want to say, you know, I've held up a poster, I've gone to a protest, but now what? What's the next thing that I can do? So Janine is going to be taking them through exercises to develop an op-ed piece. Um, maybe they've never, never, never written one before. Um, how do you write a persuasive letter to an elected official? Um, to affect change? How can I do a video myself that will really grab attention? And then we're also going to be coming at it from uh, a career services perspective because many um, entering college students are really unclear about what academic major they might want to pursue. And so we have two professionals from the career services area that will be taking the students through some profiles of incredible women professionals who maybe judges or district attorneys or parole officers. And so we're going to be looking at wrongful conviction. And October 2nd is wrongful conviction day. That will be a major milestone. Uh, and then, of course, the election. And, and what, what on earth are we, <laughs> are we going to be doing pre-election, post-election? What will this world really look like? So coming at it from career services, from a communication, from a historical perspective, and then Gwen from a legal justice perspective, talking about the really systemic um, legal and social justice reforms that need to be put in place. And so I think our students will have a really solid grounding in this at the end of the course. When we spoke, you described this course to me as sort of one of your babies. Um, why were you so passionate in helping create this course and how does it feel for you to see it finally start to come to fruition? Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, well, I love alternative learning experiences. That's, that's what Strategic Alliances, my division, is all about. Um, so it's many, many of them are non-credit offerings, but they're learning in a slightly different way. So I'll give an example. Uh, years ago, I created with the history teacher that is going to be teaching this class, Bob Surbrug, something called the One America Trip. Um, and so they study a region of the United States in the fall semester, and then they actually travel to that region in the first week in January. And so you have the experience of not only learning in the classroom, but you're actually there on the ground and you're asking the question to people that you're shoulder to shoulder with in community service projects, who are the people who really know that region? And you're asking, is there really one America? And very often the answer was no there isn't one America. There are many Americas. There may be symbols and, and so on that we all hold in common. And I guess that's what led me to this class in particular, that I really love this country. And I, I love the things that we stand for and the symbolism. But you know what? We are divided. And we have got to come together and we've got to figure out a way forward. And I really have great confidence in our young people that they will help us do that.